What's worse than an affair when you're a part of the aristocracy? That's a question I've been asking myself ever since I did my initial research into Rose Hanbury, Kate Middleton, and Prince William and the alleged rift or affair and how the media covered it in the spring of 2019. This video is going to be a little different from what I normally do. I'm going to do some theorizing. First, we're going to discuss some of the big names that are a part of the Turnip Toffs social group. Then I'm going to get into my two theories of what could have caused the rift between Rose and Kate, because I do believe there was a rift. Let's get started with the Turnip Toffs. This is a term used to describe English aristocrats that live in the English countryside. Specifically, we're talking about Norfolk, England. This article is from the Times UK, and it gives a little insight into how people from the Norfolk area talk about themselves. Tom Blowfield, who is interviewed for this piece, says, are you going to mention inbreeding? Obviously, this is said in jest, but it does indicate just how insular this community is. Quote, the theory is the upper classes there are even more insular than their peers in other counties, bed hop with relations, and are consequently mad. It's a tight-knit community with people who have wealth and generational ties that are beyond our wildest dreams. Among the group are, of course, Prince William and Kate Middleton, who were the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge at the time. Amner Hall, which is the Sandringham estate, was gifted to Prince William on his 30th birthday by Queen Elizabeth. The couple and their family started spending more time out there and really settled in Norfolk in 2016. David Chumley, who we will get into later, and his wife Rose, are said to be the leaders of this pack. There's also William Van Cutson and his wife Rosie. The two have a lot in common, including swapping girlfriends. This is from the Daily Mail, 2016. Both the Williams dated a woman named Olivia Hunt while at university. Williams' current wife, Rosie, quote, consoled William when he split from Kate in 2007. Okay. The Van Cutsom's daughter is also the little girl pictured here from that infamous photo on the balcony from William and Kate's wedding where she is looking miserable. But it was also probably pretty loud, so I don't blame her. Also in the group are Tom and Polly Cook, the Earl and Countess of Leicester, Laura Fellows, who is Prince William's cousin on Princess Diana's side of the family, Lady Laura Marsham and James Mead. James Mead was a close friend of Prince William's while at Eton, and Lady Laura is known as the gossip of Norfolk. She knows all. And there are other names that pop in and out as being a part of the Turnip Toff group, but these are the ones that I saw come up over and over again during my research. And when I tell you this could be a real life Gossip Girl reboot, I'm not even kidding. This is probably not the last time I'm looking into the turnip toffs, but let's move into my first theory. Worse than rumors of an alleged affair when you're part of the aristocracy. Theory number one is that there were worse things brewing. Something even more sinister, more nefarious than an affair. Something even the British royal family is dealing with that summer. As promised, we're returning to David Rock Savage, the seventh Marquess of Chumley and the former Lord Great Chamberlain to the late Queen Elizabeth. There's not a ton of information online about David Rock Savage. I will tell you though, that he was born the same year as Prince Andrew. They both attended the Heather Down School together. I don't know if they were close friends, but they were there at the same time. David does have some shady connection, including his very close friend, convicted criminal, Francois Melly Beignet. I'm not French, I did the best I could. He was convicted and jailed for exploiting a L'Oreal heiress. David and Francois also have business partnerships together in France. They do real estate and also have agricultural products. Not entirely sure what that means, but they are not just friends, they are in business together. There's also this very interesting piece from the Daily Mail that I had to pull out of the Wayback Machine that discusses more of Francois and David's relationship. This article is from 2019 and it goes on to say how Rose is often alone at their country home. David is said to, quote, be spending more and more time with his own friends in Paris, including controversial convicted criminal called Francois. A source said, quote, they are a professional couple and best male friends, too. It goes on to say, quote, David continued to stay in Paris for long weekends and other breaks, even when Francois's house was raided by fraud investigators as part of a money laundering inquiry. He's either a very loyal friend or his friend might have something on him. If you've ever watched Downton Abbey, you know that aristocrats tend to be less cash rich and more rich in assets like land and homes, etc. This is one of the earlier instances I can find David Rock Savage selling off art for cash. Uh, this was when he sold a piece for 10 million pounds to the National Gallery. This is from the New York Times. There was also this larger sale in 1999 to support any refurbishments and maintenance of the country home. Again, the upkeep is hella expensive. 
And I'm bringing this all up for a reason. The selling of art, the potential of being cash strapped, the interesting friends, people he was in school with. Because David Rock Savage shows up in a very curious place. He shows up in one very notorious little black book. And that little black book belongs to Jeffrey Epstein. You can see David Rock Savage's name right there with redacted contact information. To be clear, I am not inferring either way why David Rock Savage shows up in that book, but I can imagine that it would be seen as a problem. Because recall that summer, August of 2019, after the rumors start swirling about an alleged rift and affair with the Turnip Toff crew, more stories about Prince Andrew and his relationship to Jeffrey Epstein starts coming up, including what Prince Andrew allegedly did, and more names from the Little Black Book. And if it came out in August of 2019, there's a very good chance that people in these circles heard rumors swirling about Jeffrey Epstein and his many famous and royal connections way before that. And again, we don't know why David Rock Savage is in that book. Was this just another shady billionaire bestie? Did David Rock Savage need a loan? Was it something more? I don't know. But I could see a world where Kate does not want her husband, the future king, cavorting with these sort of people. So maybe she does put out the call to start distancing themselves from the Chomleys. And these rumors of a rift make it into the media and the most natural and obvious conclusion that most people make is that maybe there is an affair going on. And while that isn't ideal, maybe it is more palatable than some darker alternatives. Again, that is just theory number one. Let's move into theory number two, which has to do with Rose Hanbury herself. Theory number two, Rose Hanbury or somebody in that inner circle gave the information to the press. Hear me out. When the Cambridges first make their way out to Norfolk, the coverage is kind of rough. This is from the 2016 Daily Mail. Who's Queen Bee of the Turnip Toffs? They're rural Norfolk neighbors who've got so much in common. But sorry, Kate, the super glam Marchioness of Chomley lives in even grander style. I mean, yikes. And this is the Daily Mail. The article goes on to say how they look the same, how they both have very ambitious mothers, and even compares the houses. The article basically goes on to say that isn't it embarrassing that people farther down the pecking order have a nicer mansion than you? Amner Hall sucks. Yikes. I'm going to assume that coverage wasn't welcomed by Kate or her comms team. This reminder of the fact that even though she is future queen, she is still middle-class Kate. To them. And this is the first story that comes out about a supposed rift from the sun in March of 2019. I had to go to the Wayback Machine to find this because of course it's been scrubbed from the internet, but it's from Dan Wooten. Like Dan Wooten who writes basically fan fiction love letters to Prince William. The article itself is also very telling. He does not go into why they have a rift, just that there is a rift and a phase out. He doesn't say anything that could even conceivably constitute libel. He even throws a little jab at Meghan Markle at the end because why not? This is not a hit piece against William and Kate, but could it be seen as a warning shot? Let's say you're Rose or somebody within that inner circle. Maybe you feel like Kate is getting a little too big for her britches. Maybe you feel like she is competing for the queen bee spot. Maybe you feel like she needs a reminder of her place. And maybe Prince William and Rose Hanbury's friendship is grating on Kate. Maybe she's not liking what she's seeing. Maybe she doesn't like where it could potentially lead. And maybe she decides she's going to do something about it. But these are not the rules of engagement by which you play in these social circles. Recall, David is the Lord Great Chamberlain to the queen at the time. Rose's grandmother was one of Queen Elizabeth's bridesmaids. Kate doesn't have the power to remove them from that social circle, even if she wanted to. And maybe someone decided to embarrass her by letting this little bit of information slip out. Just enough to intrigue people, but not enough to lead to more speculation or libel. Because very quickly, the Cambridges and their team shut that shit down. And sure, an unintended consequence is a fair rumor starts swirling. But is that worth it to make your point and to put a certain future queen in her place? Again, these are just theories, because I believe the two things that are worse than affairs among this kind of group are more sordid activities and someone stepping out of place and trying to do things in a way that are simply not done. I don't know if we'll ever really have 
the full picture of what happened between Kate and Rose and subsequently Prince William and David Rock Savage. But I do think there is some there there. And if we're going to remove the allegations of an affair from the table, what else could it be? And my two personal theories, at least, are number one, worse things were coming down the pipeline, specifically for David Rock Savage. Or two, Kate Middleton stepped out of place and somebody, Rose, somebody else in the group, wanted her to know that she better get back in line because that is not how things are done within this upper crust social circle. But the Turnip Toffs are an interesting crew. The way the circle gets smaller and smaller and all of these people start interconnecting is fascinating. Truly, I need a bulletin board and red string at this point. So I have a feeling this is not the last we will be hearing from the Turnip Toffs or that I will be looking into them at least. I really want to end with like an XOXO Gossip Girl, but that would probably be really lame. Whatever. XOXO Gossip Girl.